Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity of New Westminster's Sunday Celebration Service. Please join us for our opening song this morning, Swing Wide the Doors. doors to let in the light, bring in the dawn for humankind, swing wide the doors of this heart of mine, here we go now. Happy New Year. I hope you all had a beautiful New Year's experience this year. Perhaps it wasn't the celebration that you were used to, 
and I hope it was nonetheless a beautiful experience for you. I am Reverend Rona Segarra, and it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of Unity New Westminster Spiritual Community to our Sunday celebration service. Whether you are watching us live on Zoom, on Facebook, or on YouTube, or whether you are finding us on demand after the service, I extend a warm welcome on behalf of our community. We would love to stay connected with you. So if you would like to stay connected with us, then please subscribe to our newsletter on our website or like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can remain connected. The Unity Movement offers spiritual principles for full and abundant living. We draw on the teachings of Jesus, who we consider our primary way shower and example. And we honor that there is wisdom in faith traditions all over the planet. We respect every person's right to choose their own spiritual path. All are welcome here. All are worthy here. All are celebrated here. We open our service today in prayer. I gratefully acknowledge that I speak to you on the traditional and unceded territory of the Semiamu First Nation. And we give thanks to First Nation peoples everywhere for their custody of this beautiful land. We give thanks that we are able to meet together in this virtual setting at a time when we are unable to meet in person. We give thanks for our connection one with each other. That connection that happens whether we are in each other's physical presence or not. That connection that binds us all together. We acknowledge that there is only one presence, that there is only one power that power that is understood by many names, many faces, and many paths. And we affirm that regardless of the name, the face, or the path of our understanding, that we are one human family. And it is in that knowledge of our oneness that we send a blessing for love, for peace, for contentment to every being on this planet, to every being, regardless of all the labels that threaten to divide us. We are one. And for this knowledge, for this intention, and for the power that we have to bless, we give thanks. Amen. After I read today's daily word, we'll hear a song, and then we'll begin the white stone portion of our service today. During the song, I'm going to ask you to arrange to have a stone and a magic marker, if you can, or a Sharpie, something that you can write onto the stone with. If you don't have a stone or aren't able to get one, no problem, just a piece of paper and a pen will work. And then perhaps at some time in the future, when you find a pebble that you like, you could write a word that represents 
what you have written on the paper onto the stone. And the stone doesn't have to be terribly big, something like this, which is just, I don't know, a couple of inches, an inch, something where you can write one word, maybe two on it will be just fine. So please find something like that if you can during the song after the daily word. The daily word is from January the 1st, New Year. Living from my divine nature, I begin again. Whether a new year or a new day, I am free to make a fresh start. Every moment offers a new beginning and a chance to rediscover who I really am. As I stand at the threshold of a new year, I remember that God is within, and I make a commitment to live from my spiritual nature. Seeking to live more fully as a divine being, I grow more mindful of my thoughts and my actions when I notice that they are not in alignment with love I try not to dwell on them or judge myself. Instead, I return to spirit. Like pushing a reset button, I center my mind and my heart in the truth of my oneness with God, and I begin again. I connect with the loving presence within me, and I express more and more of my divine self. And from the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 9, see, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Living from my divine nature, I begin again. I ain't gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna carry that load. I'm gonna take that pain and lay it down, 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 down. I ain't gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna carry that load. I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna let go. I ain't gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna carry that load. I'm gonna take that pain and lay it down, 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 down. I ain't gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna carry that load. I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna let go. I ain't gonna no no. I ain't gonna no no. I ain't gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna no no. I ain't gonna no no. I ain't gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna no no. I ain't gonna no no. I ain't gonna carry that. I ain't I gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna carry that load. I'm gonna take that pain and lay it down, 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 down. I ain't gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna carry that load. I'm gonna let go. Gonna let go. I'm gonna let go. carry that load no more. I ain't gonna carry that load. I'm gonna take that pain and lay it down, 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 down. I ain't gonna carry that load no more. I ain't gonna carry that load. I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna let go. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna 
Have you ever had the experience where you wished you could start again? Have you ever had the thought of, I just wish I could do this differently in the future? Well, as you know, at New Year, we all look at ideas for how to amend some of our behaviors. We call them New Year's resolutions. And they are commitments we try to make up for ourselves to become better expressions of humanity. And normally those expressions are things like losing weight or getting more exercise or perhaps improving our life balance with our work balance and our family balance. And all of those habits are certainly worth our attention. And at Unity, we have a tendency to want to look deeper, so a little bit below the surface, at what might be going on inside of us that we want to express, not just in terms of what we eat or how we spend our time, but who we are and how we present ourselves to the world. We call the ceremony that we are going to do today a white stone ceremony. It is performed at churches Unity Churches all over the world on the first Sunday of the New Year. And it represents a time for us to go within and have a sense of discernment about what we are longing to express in a more profound way in this new year. It's in some ways a rite of passage, a chance for a new start. Here's what I'm talking about. The slide says, whenever something goes wrong, I just push this little button and restart. I wish my whole life was like that. <laughs> I know there are times when I wished I could push the restart button, and I'm sure that is true for you. And today is an invitation, perhaps not to necessarily restart, but certainly to recognize that it is hard to wipe the slate clean when you use a permanent marker. And there is no need for us to limit ourselves to a permanent marker. That at any time we can move away from our embedded beliefs about who we are and what we've done, and we can shift and start again. And this whole time of the coming of the light here in the Northern Hemisphere where the days are already noticeably becoming longer, combined with this time of New Year and a time of reflection and then new beginnings, is our opportunity to recognize that nothing need be written in permanent ink, that we every day have an opportunity for a fresh start. And we began the ceremony, this process, last week in our dissolving ceremony. That was when we took the opportunity to write and just let everything that was on our heart get expressed onto a piece of paper. And many 
of you have let me know how powerful it was just to be able to write with no filter. Big piece of paper and just write. And then the invitation was to shred that, to tear it up. And I've heard from several of you about how powerful that felt, the idea of literally being able to tear apart the stuff that we don't want to carry with us into the new year, the emotions that we've been feeling. And then we wrote a small sentence or two on a piece of tissue paper that represented all of that stuff that we didn't want to carry with us. And we dissolved it. And then we wrote a love letter to ourselves, something that we will tuck away and hopefully find sometime unexpectedly in the next year and be reminded of how precious we are. Today is a continuation to some extent of that process. And we borrow the inspiration for this ritual from the book of Revelation. In Revelation, we are told this. Chapter 2, verse 17. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give a white stone. And on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. It seems to be a bit confusing, perhaps. And so, what does it mean? Well, for us, what we try to do is recognize that people, places, and things that are in story, in song, are actually representations of what is going on within us. And so we look at this from a metaphysical point of view. And I'm going to break down this passage for you in a way that interprets it a little differently and applies to each of us as we are now. So we look at, let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Anyone in metaphysics is our thoughts. The people, the people represent our thoughts. And who has an ear? Well, if you have an ear, then it means that you're open to change, that you're open to hearing. And so let anyone who has an ear can be metaphysically understood to say, let our thoughts, which are able to be opened to change, let our thoughts, which are able to be opened, that are able to be changed, that are able to be adjusted, let our thoughts, like our, like our ears, be receptive to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Well, again, Spirit is that innermost longing within us. And the churches are the things that we perhaps hold sacred, the thoughts and beliefs and attitudes that we might have that we hold sacred. And so the invitation in this passage is that 
we be receptive to the innermost longing within us. Then we move to the next part of the passage, which is, to everyone who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. Well, if you think about to anyone who overcomes, and we say that any one is our thoughts, then when we overcome our thoughts, what we're doing is dismissing, releasing, uninviting from our lives the thoughts that no longer serve us well. And so we overcome our bad habits, our thoughts, our beliefs, our attitudes, our beat, beliefs, emotions, attitudes, and thoughts. And when we do so, when we allow our thoughts to touch the innermost longing within us, then we will receive hidden manna. And what does manna represent? Manna is nourishment, it is fulfillment. And so these two slides that I've just shared with you are the beginning of this entire passage. And what they're saying is, if we are open to allowing our old thoughts to be put aside, and we're willing to hear the inner wisdom of our higher self, the innermost longing within us, then we will be nourished that we will find more fulfillment. We move on to the next portion of this passage, which is, and I will give a white stone. And this is where it becomes interesting, because the white stone is something that we've been told about from Roman history. And according to Reverend Frida King, I'll quote this to you, a white stone, uh, uh, regarding the white stone, quote, people were given a white stone to represent that they were a Roman citizen, and that was no small thing it meant that they had the full force of, and power of Rome behind them. If they were ever imprisoned, the white stone was removed from them, and when they were freed, the stone was restored to them." End quote. So what we know about the white stone, or what we understand about the white stone, is that it represents freedom. It represents new citizenship. It represents uh, an expansion after being imprisoned. It represents forgiveness. It represents all of this newness. And so we are given this white stone. Another interpretation of the white stone is that it was given to victors after they had, um, they had won at the public games. And they were given a white stone. And they were then entitled to be taken care of by essentially for the rest of their lives and at the expense of the city. They were, white stones were also used on festival days um, as a mark of positivity. So if you, I think, I think of it in terms of how it used to be when you would receive a, or give a flower to somebody as a token of your appreciation. Well, they would give a white stone. 
if a host had a guest who he truly appreciated. The guest was given a white stone with a name or a message written on it, directed only to the guest and not to be shared by any other. That is according to Dr. Oliver Green, who wrote in the book, The Revelation Verse. It was also used as an admission ticket to festivals. So this white stone has currency. It has power. It represents freedom. And so in our telling of this verse from Revelation, when we are told that we are going to be given a white stone, what we are saying uh, is that we will be given the freedom to start again. And on the white stone is written a new name. Well, we all know that names are important that names represent who we are. In metaphysical terms, which is what I'm talking about when I say that they, things and people and places represent things within us, names are important because they have a symbolic meaning. They represent our nature. And so when we write a name, a word, on a white stone, it is an understanding of a new nature that we are calling on. Dr. Emily Cady, in her book, Lessons in Truth, wrote this. The white stone ceremony gives us the opportunity to choose a new secret spiritual name for ourselves, a name that resonates with the qualities that we wish to develop." End quote. So when you think of your name, think of it as a quality that you wish to develop a nature, an aspect of yourself that you wish to develop. And then the passage goes on to say that no one knows except the one who receives it. This is an important aspect of this passage, which is that we are on our own spiritual journey. We are on our own spiritual journey, each of us. And despite our best intentions, our longing to help someone along the way, perhaps uh, to encourage them to do things differently, to behave differently, aside from the fact that we know it doesn't work very well, it's really not ours to do. This discernment that happens needs to come from each person individually. And where each of us is on our spiritual path is where each of us is on our spiritual path. This is an, a personal transformation journey that each person can only do for themselves. And it needs to be and will be only at the time when we are ready for it. So, personal, private, and ready to be received. 
So we translate that original passage and we can rewrite it to look and sound like this. Let our thoughts, which can be changed, be receptive to the innermost longing within us. When our thoughts align, when we give them permission to align with our innermost longing, we will receive fulfillment from within and we will be given freedom to start again. A fresh start, a new nature, which is private, which is personal, which is ready to be received. So, we think back to that prisoner having a white stone taken away from him or her and then having served a sentence and being in prison long enough being given a white stone again with a fresh new start with the promise of a fresh new start an opportunity for a clean slate no permanent marker what can that feel like for you What are you willing to leave in the cell? What personal prison have you claimed that you are now ready to step out of? That is the question for today. Dr. King goes on to say, I ask you today, what kind of prisons have you confined yourself to that your white stone can empower you to break through? What kind of prison and false laws are you living with? What prisons have constrained you and held you back this is a brand new moment. Here we are with the stone in our hand, this stone which is a symbol of freedom. It is a freedom to step beyond the walls of whatever prison you have placed yourself in. This stone which in ancient days may have represented the full power and force of Rome, today represents the full power and force of God in you, God as you. It represents your thoughts. New thoughts represented by the stone are going to take root in you and in the world. And as they do, we transform the world. And so we're going to move into a time of quiet. As part of that time of quiet, I'm going to start some music. And I invite you to close your eyes, relax, listen.
I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God when I pray. I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. Right here. I feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God when I pray. I feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. Right here, right I feel my love go deeper, my love go deeper into my God when I pray. I feel my love go deeper, my love go deeper into my God. Right here, right now. Right where I am, I pray. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. Right here, right now, right where I am. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. I'll take that stone in your hand. Feel the smoothness of your stone. Feel the strength. Feel the solid nature of the stone. Turn your attention within. Take a deep, relaxing breath. And be in that place of stillness. A place where you touch the wisdom within you.
And I invite you to allow my words to be the words of your heart. I am free. I have a clean slate. I can choose at any moment to begin again. And as I choose to let go, I free myself to live more fully. I release old thoughts and beliefs that have kept me in a type of prison. I surrender. Limiting images of who I am. I am a glorious expression of life. Here to make a difference for good. I am here to be the very presence of love. the very presence of peace, the presence of gentleness and kindness in any situation. And as I choose to release and free myself from this prison. The door before me opens and I walk through to freedom. The stone in my hands reminds me that I am free to choose again. And as I walk out of my prison towards a greater expression of myself, begin to reflect on a new name, a new nature, a word that I will claim this year that will inspire me, that will support me as I expand and grow. In the silence, I turn within and wait for a word, for a name, for a phrase, for whatever inspiration bubbles up. I move now into a time of reflection.
And when you are ready, I invite you to open your eyes. Write your word upon your stone. If you don't have a word now, no matter. Remain open. Something will appear in your thoughts. Today, tomorrow, next week. Remain open. And once you have written on your stone, I invite you to place it in your heart. Hold it, literally hold it to your heart. And know that you can put it in your kitchen, under your pillow, somewhere where your eyes will land on it frequently as a gentle reminder of this intention that you have set for yourself to gain new freedom this year. and be grateful for it. Lean into it. Relax. Release. All is well. I'm 
release and surrender. I relax, let go. Release and surrender. I relax, let go. Release and surrender. All is well. All is well. All is well. You are invited to join us on Mondays at 11 o'clock for our weekly prayer service. It is a time where we get together on Zoom and we connect with each other. We share how we are doing with each other. We move into a time of guided prayer and we read the names of the people who are on our prayer list. And it is a time of renewal, of connection. It is a profound experience of recentering. And so I invite you to join us for that. And if you would like your name or you know someone who you would like to have added to that prayer list, then please email us at unityofnewwestminster at gmail.com. And we'll be sure to have the person's name or your name added to our list. Mondays at 11. Thank you for your continued financial support. I'm always so touched by the generosity of our community that gives so much from the spirit of abundance that you share that you are willing to support and contribute. As a result of your gifts, our ministry is able to give to charities that do some amazing work, both in our own community as well as internationally. And we support Unity, of, uh, Unity Canada and the work that they do to support Unity's message across this nation. There are many ways to give and I invite you to choose whatever is most comfortable for you. The important thing is that you are sharing from your place of abundance. And so I invite you now to think of something that you are feeling abundant for, something that you are willing to share Hold that gift in your hand, in your heart, as we sing our blessing song and remember that we are so very truly blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. And so we come to the end of our service today. 
if you are watching us live on Zoom or on Facebook or on YouTube, please consider joining us after the service on Zoom for a time of fellowship. It's a growing party that we have every week where we get to connect with each other, where we see each other's faces, we hear each other's voices and chat with each other as if we were together in person. I hope that you all enjoyed your experience today and I wish you a very blessed, blessed week. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Of God.